everyone. Welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, follow, comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Folks, there's a link tree down below. If you click that link tree, it has the link to all my social media. Um, please follow me across my social media. Also has the links to all of my YouTube pages as well. Please subscribe to all my YouTube pages. Turn on your notifications as well. And give this video a thumbs up. Um, I want to thank everybody that does get involved with those links any way that they can. Now, with that said and put to the side, I want to talk to you folks today about the New York Jets losing in an unbelievable fashion. I'm talking unbelievable to the Las Vegas Raiders. I live streamed during this game. A salute to all the savages that joined me. You know, we, we, we had... We had a time. And when I tell you, folks, I am stunned. I am still rocked. I am still rocked. I had to literally pick myself up off the floor after this game. I am rocked at the fact that we lost this game. I'm rocked. I mean, they really did it to me this time. <laughs> they really did a number on me. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you folks. They really did a number on me. They really did. You know, you got to laugh to keep from crying sometimes. It's insane. To start out, to start out, the offense looked good. The offense looked really good. You know, Sam comes out. He's throwing the football around. We're running the football effectively, efficiently. We were saying, hey, to ourselves, the play calling is, this is definitely not Adam Gaze. There was motions, there was misdirections. There was a lot of things going on. We said, no, no, no. Adam Gaze is not calling this game. This is not Adam Gaze. Nope. It's either Jim Bob Cooter and a collaboration of Jim Bob Cooter and uh, Daryl Loggins or is Daryl Loggins by itself. But let me tell you something. Adam Gaze is not calling this game. Right? Early Sam comes out, those are TD to Crowder. We're hyped because, you know, Last game, we didn't score a TD at all. Then Sam comes back down again in the drive and scores another touchdown, throws it to Crowder again for a TD. I said to myself, whoa. And a lot of these route, the route combinations that we were running, a lot of stuff coming across the middle, a lot of drag routes, some slants, all kinds of stuff that we don't normally see, right? And again, the running game was like, whoa, okay. We were hyped. We were so hyped. Everything was rolling very well. Early in the first, and middle of the first, we were just getting things done. Things were going so well. Then we got into that second quarter, right? I want to say late in the second, about six to seven minutes left in the second quarter, and things just went awry. I know you're looking at me, you're saying, Joe, well, Joe, what happened? I don't know what happened. I don't know. It just... Everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. I have no clue what happened. Right? Sam comes out. He drops back for a pass. The guy that Makai Becton is, was blocking beats him. Strips Sam. It's a strip sack. Raiders get the football. I said, Whoa. We were all shocked. Whoa. Makai Becton getting beat? That, that does not happen. He's been the shining light of our offensive line. We were all just super surprised. But immediately I said to myself, it doesn't matter. Like, that's not a big deal, right? Makai Becton, been a shining light on this line. Even the best ever have been beat, right? Even the best tackles in the league get beat at least, you know, once a season, something like that. That means nothing. It's nothing to me. Okay, let him go to the sidelines. He'll come back, figure some things out. He'll come back, and he'll be shutting these guys down again, right? So... The Raiders go on to, to kick a field goal. They hit a field goal off of that. Okay. Offense comes back out. Moving down the field. Sam drops back. He throws an interception. Well, damn. Like, what is going on out here? The, the ball that Sam threw, I didn't agree with the throw. He was throwing it to a, to, a, to a wide receiver that really was not open. The defender was really draped all over him. There was no separation. But one thing that we noticed, you know, 
was that the play calling was just different. It looked really stagnant. The motions had stopped. And we were all talking about it like this, this, this offense doesn't look good anymore. It, it, the closer we got to that two minute portion of the of our offense, it was just worse. So I think, you know, maybe Adam Gaze started calling these plays again. Right? Now, after Sam throws that interception, of course, the Raiders turn around, they get a score off, they get a TD from Waller. Let me tell you something. The Raiders threw the Waller all day today. That dude had 200 yards and, and two TDs. He was just open all game. Open all game. They would get it to him on an easy pitch and catch, and he would run around for 10, 20, sometimes 30 yards at a time. It was insane. Did anybody watch the Raiders? Anybody watch the film? I talked about it in my game preview. I talked about how much they utilize him, how good of a tight end he is. I don't think anybody on the Jets knew about him. They just tried to single cover him with Lange. Lange was getting abused in coverage by Waller. Hell, some, he, he abused some of our guys in the secondary too. We had to, we, dude, he, he was just, he was their offense. Literally, their sole part of their offense for most of the game. It was insane. Nobody could cover him. He scores a TD. It's like, okay, let's get it rolling. We come back on offense. Banking gets beat again. Sam drops back. He gets strip sacked again. I mean, he took a shot. He took a shot. This is right before the half. And we're, again, another game where we're going into the half dead. Completely dead. And we're all sitting back reeling like, okay, here we go again. It's the same old, same old. We're going to go into the half dead. We're going to come out dead too. It's over. DOA. We come out of the half. Raiders get the ball, we kick them off, they come down, they score. Easy. Easy peasy. Now we're saying, we gotta, we gotta pick it up. We gotta ramp it up offensively. We cannot let this team blow our doors off. We can't do this. We need halftime adjustments. Our offense was as stagnant as it could get. I'm talking stale bread with mold on it. It was over. It looked over. Same stuff that we've seen before. Horrific play calling. Just trash stuff. I think at one point we called a screen on third and 16. Like it was, it was, it, it looked like a typical Adam Gaze game. So we were just all just kind of sitting back being like, okay, it's over, you know? But there was a portion in the third quarter where we all came together and we just started to try to pick up and, 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 and lift the team with our positive energy. So we started cheering. We started screaming. We started talking about it. I started talking about it as well. Hey, look, we got to fight. We got to fight. I got to put it together. People were calling me Coach Joe and, you know, everybody was getting fired up. You have to get fired up. We got to get a W. We got to get a win. We got to get it done. We cannot lay down and let this team trash us like this. We don't have a win on the season. We got to start here. We got to turn it around. And at the end of the third quarter, after a really solid drive, again, our backs, Ty Johnson, Josh Adams, the tandem of them running. We got a drive going down. And at the end of the third quarter, Sam runs in for a touchdown. And he dusted. He completely dusted one of the Raiders defenders. Dropped his shoulder and just, mm, get off me, you bum. Ran him straight over. Right? Now we hyped. We, we, we're getting ourselves back into the football game. You know what I'm saying? Picking up that energy, getting it going, worked. We were fired up. We also got a two-point conversion as well. We converted that. So now we're hyped, dude. We're hyped. We come back on defense. We're fired up. We're cheering for the team. Marcus May playing extremely well. He goes out there. He gets us a fumble recovery. We're in business. We got the ball back. We're ready to go. We take that fumble recovery. We come back. We, turn, we keep it moving. We roll down. Again, Ty Johnson, Josh Adams. Guys just moving. The running game is efficient. Everything's going well. Ty Johnson runs in for a TD. Now we up. 24-28. We in the game, baby. They counted us out, but we back. We back. Nothing can phase us. We're back, but we got to close this out. There's still time left on this clock. We got to close it out. We got to keep that in mind. That's what we were, we were all saying it. We were fired up. Raiders get the ball, they come back out. 
Of course, we get, we get penalties, all kind of stupid. We had stupid penalties all day that continued to, you know, extend the Raiders' drives, and we saw that on, on, on in the fourth quarter on their drives. We got a holding call that extended one of their one of their one of their drives. All these things, right? But eventually, we were able to get a stop, right? They had called a holding call. They what well, was it? It was offsetting penalties. Um, we had got a call. They got a call. Offsetting, but it was it was still fourth down. They threw a ball, it was into the dirt, done. We get turnover on downs, we got the ball. We got the ball back with a minute and some seconds left on the clock. We are fired up. We're ready to go, right? All we got to do is close the game out. And we got it. That's all we got to do. We come out after getting the turnover on downs. And we run the ball three times. We run the ball three times, and we don't get a first down. And I was thinking to myself when I watched that, I said, this is not good. And, and this is what I talk about with coaching. Any other team in the league that has a coach that has a killer mindset, they would have made sure we got that first down. They would have called plays that would have we would have kept attacking. Why we all of a sudden went into, well, we'll just run the ball three times and we'll just leave some clock and we'll, no, 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 no. That's not how the NFL works. If there is an opportunity, any opportunity that a team has for a win, you snatch that and take it away. We should be hungry. And I felt like that wasn't the right thing to do at the time. And boy, oh boy, was I right. Now we kicked the ball back to the Raiders. We punt the ball back after running the ball three times. And they had something like 35 seconds left on the clock. Now you, I, and everybody else that watched the Raiders, and I talked about this in my game preview. I talked about it in my game preview. I talked about Henry Ruggs. We talked about him being a guy that takes the top off the defense. We talked about him being a burner, right? You have 35 seconds left on the clock, and you got to figure out how to score a touchdown on a bomb. Everybody in the world knows it's pretty simple, right? You go to the fastest guy on your offense. Who's the fastest guy on the offense? Henry Ruggs. Our defensive coordinator, Greg Williams, left our young corner, Lamar Jackson, Guy in his rookie year left him manned up by himself on Henry Ruggs. For what reason? Nobody knows. Henry Ruggs, after a snap, runs right past Lamar Jackson like he's not even there. Derek Carr chucked that football up. Henry Ruggs just ran under it and scored a touchdown. The Jets lose 31 to 28. This is what it's like being a Jets fan. Having your hopes and dreams just snatched away from your ass in a second. In a second. Anytime that you think that you're safe, anytime that you're celebrating, you're ready. You're ready. You taste the victory. You're eating lobster. You're eating shrimp. You blink your eyes and it's all gone. They snatch it off the table. Back to bread and water. Oh, you living in that big house? Come here, buddy. Get your ass out of that house. Back to the sidewalk with you. The Jets, that call on defense was inexcusable. Inexcusable. Those three runs before punting the ball and leaving and not being aggressive and continue to try to get for a, for a first down was inexcusable. Inexcusable. We're doing things like this, and we're a team that has not won a game the entire year. You need to fire this entire staff after the season is done. There were some good things about this game. We fought hard. I thought that Sam was able to bounce back and get his, his momentum back. I thought he looked, you know, really good ending the game. He looked good ending the game. He looked good starting the game. You just got to put things together. The play calling is very up and down. You can clearly see that something's going on here, okay? 
their their drives or downs where Gaze is calling the plays alone, and when he's not, it, it this play calling structure is it's horrific. There, there's too many chefs in the kitchen here. You can see it in the difference in play calling and scheme. You can see it as clear as day if you watch this team. I thought that Quentin Williams looked good. I thought that Marcus May looked good. But this team, to lose a heart, just have a heartbreaking loss like that, man, it took it out of me. I want you folks to comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. This, this really, this, this loss left me really, I don't even know what to say. I don't. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. How do you feel about the Jets losing to the Raiders? Whew. You folks have a good one. Peace.